Yeah. How are we doing? Everybody good? Good. Yeah. Good. Um, let's kick start it. Andreas, you do, you do, you do your little video. There we go. Hi. Hi. Uh, Andreas, I want to talk to you a bit about the casting, first of all, because uh, this is the first glimpse that obviously everybody here has had of Alex, uh, or Otto as Alex. Can you talk to us a bit about the casting call uh, and the process that you went through to find uh, the fabled Alex Ryder? Um, yes, I think it started with a, with a casting call nationwide. And, and I think we saw about more than 1,000 uh, guys for this part. And um, I met a lot of people. And we had one day where, you know, it, it came down to, I think, six or eight. And this poor guy had to, you know, play the scenes over and over and over again, not just in front of me, in front of this gentleman here, in front of, I don't know, five executive producers. There was a lot of people in the room. <laughs> yes, and in the end, there could only be one guy playing Alex Wright, and this is this gentleman here. And what was it about Otto then that, uh, that, that caught your eye and that, that, that made that decision for you? Um, I mean, uh, you've, you've seen him on the screen, and it's kind of awkward to talk about him when he's sitting right next to me. But uh, he had, I, I mean, first of all, you needed somebody who's looking like he's 16 or something and who is not 16, because otherwise you get in trouble, you know, with the working hours and all this kind of thing. Yeah. Who has, Slave labor, yeah. Yes, and who has um, the ability to, you know, be a, a real person and not just an, an actor, who, who is able to transform his personality to the screen, and uh, who has also the stamina to, you know, work for what hundred and whatever shooting days we had. And I think he has the potential to be a big star. I agree with you. And what about the rest of the cast then? Obviously, the, you, I'm asking you to talk about people that you're sat next to. The, the, the show's got quite an international feel. You know, it feels very big and ambitious. Yeah, very international. I'm from Austria. <laughs> what was it? Was it, a difficult, was it a difficult piecing everybody together? You know, you, I mean, we, we didn't see too much of him in the, in the trailer, but, you know, Stephen Delane is there. You know, obviously we've got Vicky. There's, there's a mixture of kind of uh, well-known faces and, and, and new people. Was, that must have been uh, good, good fun for no, you. It's, it, it, I mean, first of all, we needed to, you know, find the right actress for Jack, who is sitting right next to me, uh, because uh, this kind of family is, is strange because there's this uncle uh, and then there's Jack, and so she's kind of the heart of the whole story. We had to find the best friend, Tom, uh, and I don't want to talk about Vicky when she's sitting right next to me. <laughs> um, Anthony, uh, let's talk about Otto and, and, and Brennick as, uh, Otto as Alex and Brennick as Tom. How is it for you, having spent so much time inside the heads of all these characters, sat at your presumably uh, typewriter in this tiny little cabin uh, in the woods where you sit there writing all your books, how is it seeing them transform onto the screen then? It's sort of extraordinary. I still can't quite get over the fact that I am now sitting next to Alex Ryder, uh, a character I've lived with for 20 years, and now suddenly here he is, played by Otto, and played to perfection. I could not be happier. As to Brenner, who you saw briefly on the video, um, in the books, as anybody who's read them knows, Tom is a tiny character, but Brennock is so spectacularly good in the part that the character is almost equal to Alex. I mean, the scenes when the two of them are together are such fun, there's so much energy, that now when I'm writing the books, actually Tom is almost as big a character as Alex. Did it feel like you, when you first saw Otto, was there, was there a bit of a moment where you were just like, that's, that's the guy? Well, I'll tell you something. In that, you know, you talked about the casting process. And I remember that all these actors were finally down to about 18 or 20 people who were doing uh, Jack and, and Tom and Alex and different versions of them. And the moment that Ronke and Brennock and Alex came together, every single person in the room, every suit, every person there involved knew we had our cast. It was a, something magic happened, and you'll see it on the screen. Um. Otto, I suppose we better talk to you. Mr. Alex Ryder, everybody. It's Otto Hello, Ferran. <laughs> How does it feel to, to finally be unveiled as uh, such an iconic character? Uh, it feels great. It's kind of 
strange. I've never been in a room with this many people before. <laughs> what were those final auditions like? Did you did you know that you got the gig, or was it was it? Did they keep you guessing? No, I, I had no idea. Um, I knew that when I was in the room with Ronke and Brennock that I I really in, I was really having fun with them, and I knew that I even said to Brennock if if we both did this, it would be a real laugh and I know we, we would have six months of just of just enjoying ourselves and that's what we did so when I got the job I was like yeah, over the moon I mean presumably you grew up reading yeah reading the books as well so you, you, in your head you'd already played Alex Ryder many times <laughs> yeah it's weird actually I was I wasn't a big reader when I was a kid um I was kind of more into like maths and stuff um but then the the only books that I was really into because my my sibling read them was Alex Ryder and, uh, and funnily enough, Point Blank was my favorite of the Alex Ryder books. Amazing. And here we are putting Point Blank on screen, which is, is cool. Um, let's have another clip, shall we? Uh, um, Ron Kay, I want to talk about Alex's kind of ordinary life. So Jack represents, I guess, the stability. You know, he's got two sides to, to, to his story here. And, uh, and you're, you're the grounding influence on him, aren't you? Um, what was your experience working kind of with Alex, with, with, with Otto, with Brennick and, and all those kind of guys? How was it for you? It was such a pleasure. We had such a good time. And it was so uh, easy to kind of enter into that space of best friends, big sister, kind of home body. So I had an amazing time. It was wonderful. Did you, have, did, you, did you click straight away? Did it take a I while? I think so. No, no, no. I don't think it took a while at all. I think we clicked. In the audition? At the auditions. Yeah. I guess that's why you got the gig. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. Um, <laughs> now, and, I guess, Anthony, and uh, to bring you in as well, Guy, um, that whilst there's, there's a lot of kind of humour and warmth that we saw in, in that clip there, uh, how is it balancing all of the high-octane kind of action and, I guess, telling... Uh, well, a story about a, a about a guy that's been through a lot as well, was it? Um, well, I think a big part of that is that Alex is not uh, an ordinary spy. He's somebody who's reluctantly forced into this world. So we wanted to give him a normal home background, a kind of ordinary life that he's, he's ripped away from. And it was important that he comes across at the beginning as someone who's, you know, just one of the, the ordinary kids at school. How does it work between the, between the yeah. two of you? For those of you who don't understand, or haven't been told rather, I didn't write the, the screenplay to this series. Uh, I was busy working on the next Alex Ryder novel, Nightshade, out next year, just thought I'd mention it. Uh, <laughs> so I passed writing duties over to Guy, and he took over, and I can't tell you how excited I am by the fact that he's been so true to the spirit of Point Blank and of the characters and the plot and everything, but has really made it his own and expanded the world and made it more adult and darker and in some ways even, I think, more intense than the book. Um, he, he just did a great job, but I didn't... It's not... not oh, yeah. thank you. <laughs> well, I would say that, wouldn't I? If I'd always people talk to you. Do, do you find it easy to hand over your, your characters for someone else to, to kind of run away with a little Yeah, bit? television is about collaboration. If you don't trust the team, and I was lucky because 11th Hour Films gave me the, you know, the dream team... Uh, if you don't trust the team, you're just going to, you know, you're going to do yourself no good. So I, I was happy to take a back seat. I kept watch on everything, but I didn't really get involved. I didn't need to. So, Guy, what's it like when you get given a gig of, 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 of kind of, uh, well, taking, taking a character like Alex and the novels and, and kind of moulding them into like a TV format? Well, a lot of the heavy lifting has been done already because the book is there. You've got the, um, the plot is all worked out. Thank oh, yeah. That's it. I'm being I'm being directed. <laughs> Sorry, help. <laughs> um, so from from my point of view, it's really lovely to be able to take something that's that's already a, a cracking story and a very thrilling story, and and look at how we can expand it, what other characters we can bring in, how we can dig into the sort of emotional side of it a little more, because I think that that's worth doing, especially when you're seeking to reach an older audience it's worth looking at how these characters might feel about what's happening to them. And we spend a lot of time thinking about Alex and, and the impact on him that would come from really being thrown into the deep end of a world that he never even dreamed existed. He had no idea his uncle was a spy. He had no idea that his uncle was killed in the line of duty until it all comes crashing down on him. Yeah. 
And also in that clip, Otto, we saw some pretty good Parker going on there. So there's some there's some good stunt skills. Uh, Rumor has it that the, you are pretty. You, you're, you're the young Daniel Craig. You insist <laughs> on doing your own. You are Tom Cruise without the broken foot. <laughs> I tried to do as much as they would let me. There's a, there's a, if you've read the books, you'll know that there's a big snowboarding sequence uh, at the end of the book, which I, we actually shot b- before anything else. Um, and I wasn't allowed to do that because if I had broken my leg, I probably wouldn't have been Alex Ryder. Um, so I didn't get to do that. But mostly I, I tried to do as much as I, I was allowed to. Um, some, well, that's a dream come true, isn't it, to get to do all that kind yeah, of stuff? Yeah, yeah. It's really cool to see it all come to life on screen as well because it's very technical, you know. A stunt is, is, is quite a hard thing to achieve, and then you see it on screen, it looks so cool. Like, there's some great fights, and um, there's, a, there's a great fight in episode eight, which I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about. <laughs> no spoilers. 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 Uh, I'll tell you what, we're going to go, uh, let's find out a little bit more about the department, shall we? Uh, This next clip gives us an introduction to them. We see Alex, who, against all the odds, uh, has managed to sneak in, uh, which gives Blunt the idea of using uh, him as a spy. (laughs) Stephen Delane there. Interrogating uh, Alex, I believe he's uh, two uh, ranks above him, which uh, allows me to introduce Vicky McClure, ladies and gentlemen, everybody. (laughs) How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. Um, now, what can you tell us about the mysterious Mrs. Jones? Well, I don't want to spoil too much. Um, I think that scene explains well what our department is. Um, the great thing about the series is you're in lots of different locations at different times. And when you're in the department, you know, it's great for Alex and to sort of discover what his new role is. Yeah. Um, but as Mrs. Jones, she has come sort of... Oh, an, an energy with him and then like a relationship with Blunt and a relationship with uh, Crawley and yet she's quite a parenting with Alex as well so I got to play lots of different is it fair say, things in it which was, which was nice rather than just being sort of a direct spy so to speak is it fair to say her moral compass is, is kind of is constantly wavering yes exactly yeah I should um, have said that Pardon? I should have said that. No, your, your answer was longer, which makes it better. <laughs> um, what appealed to you uh, about, the, about Mrs. Jones and the show, you know, in terms of the tone and the style and stuff? Uh, well, I was honest from the start. I'd not heard or read the books because I'm a bit older than Otto. You're not. <laughs> but I asked my nephew, who's 12 years old, and said, have you ever heard of a book called Alex Ryder? And I got a response of, yeah. Like I was stupid, so um, obviously I went and did my research, and it's great. It's it's an amazing job to be part of something that is pure adventure. Um, you know, there's so much action in it, and yeah, I I, I didn't even really consider not doing it because it was a great part. What have we got to look forward to? I guess, uh, does, does Mrs. Jones go on a bit of a, a bit of a journey alongside Alex? Yeah, I mean, there's, we had loads of scenes together and we had a lot of fun. Um, there's lots of stuff in, in the department as well, but um, I do have to wear a snowsuit at one point, which I really wow. liked. <laughs> <laughs> um, Guy, uh, we, we talked a little bit about ageing the books up a little bit. Yeah. And I guess that's... Is that, is, that, is that partly because, I guess, uh, people that read the books first time around are now at, at an age where they, where they expect something a little bit older, a little bit darker... I think that was very much at the back of all of our minds. And, uh, and also, I mean, this is a really tricky one to navigate. This is the thing that scares me most because there are so many millions of fans of the books out there. And when you read the book, you get a very clear picture of a 14-year-old Alex and you get a very clear picture of his world. And we have pulled that a little. We've pulled him a little older. We've pulled the tone a little grittier, tried to make things a bit more grounded. Um, but we have absolutely, I promise you, tried to stay true to the spirit of Anthony's novels. So I, it's the same Alex. It's just that we're trying to make it a little bit more grounded in the real world. Yeah. I guess the department is the darker side of the books. They are. Anyway, so... And they're kind of a scary force because on, on the one hand, they're supposed to be the government, they're supposed to be protecting us. But on the other hand, they are coercing Alex into doing this job. And they are kind of responsible for his uncle's death as well. Um, and Anthony, how did you kind of collaborate with Guy on that in terms of the expansion of the department and, you know, 
the decision to, to make them a little bit darker? I didn't really. I mean, you know, the, the truth is that the, when I wrote the Alex Ryder books, they were always said to be adult books for kids. They were never really meant to be sort of ordinary children's books. And it was very important for the TV show. We all agreed from the start that this was not going to be children's television. It was a difficult balancing act because we had to uh, appeal to a wide adult audience whilst at the same time not alienating younger viewers by being too violent, too adult, too serious or whatever. Uh, I didn't particularly get involved. In fact, if, if I may say so, it's probably Andreas who should answer that question because the moment Andreas came into the picture, he completely understood the tone, which was this not even family drama, but, you know, but, but serious adult drama that would still appeal to kids. Uh, and I've got to ask... Uh both Otto and, and Vicky, uh, there's not many, there aren't many people that I, that I would kind of like, loot, my legs would go to jelly and stood in front of, but Stephen Delaney is probably one of them. He terrifies me, just as a human yeah, being. Both. What's, he like, what's he like to, 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 do, to do stuff with? I wish he was here, because yeah. he's got the driest sense of humor, hasn't yeah. he? I didn't and understand I think... it at first. I didn't, get, I didn't get the sense of humor, but as we did shot more and more, it, it like, is out. he taking the mick out? Yeah, yeah. It's not daft. It gets to the point where you all get, you know, it gets to about four o'clock, everyone's a bit tired, and then everyone gets like the <laughs> silly hour, and he started to join in. <laughs> so I saw a completely different side to him. He's yeah, great. I mean, he he's fantastic great. in this, but he was he was um, really special to work with, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just his voice, isn't it? As well. he's, constant, he's great as well, because he's constantly testing you in the scene, but also kind of as a, as a person. He keeps you on your toes. Because um, obviously he he requires the the best quality of work, you know. So it's great. You you feel like you have to rise to his level, which is really really fantastic. And Vicky as well. And I guess to both Otto and Ronke, as as relative newcomers, it must be kind of like quite exciting to kind of be able to to kind of soak it all up from from people like Vicky and Steve. Hell yeah! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. definitely, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Um, right, we're going to have, have another a clip. Just to give you guys a heads up, in about, about 10 or 11 minutes' time, we're going to throw it open to you guys. So if you've got any questions, start, start thinking of them, and I'll, and I'll give you a shout, and you can come and start queuing up there. But we're going to go and grab another clip now. This is going to look ahead to some of the later episodes, uh, which shows the Creepy Point Blank Academy. Uh, it's set, as Otto mentioned earlier on, it's set in the French Alps, where Alex friend uh, is sent undercover to investigate what's really going on. Uh, Andreas, the, the, the tone and style of that, that's proper cool. That's, uh, I would quite like to have gone to a college like that without the slapping. Uh, but, the, but certainly it was like Kill Bill meets, uh, meets goodness knows what. Talk to me a bit about how you kind of developed that, that kind of tone for Point um, Blank. Yes, I mean, and, and there were there were different approaches for this whole point blank thing in in, in the scripts. But uh, I think it was over Christmas when I was watching The Shining again, uh, and I thought this might be you know an interesting lead for 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 the Point Blank Academy. And then we tried to find something of like The Shining in the middle of London, and and found a location uh, which kind of delivered a lot of the atmosphere there, and. And then we had a lot of discussions should they wear school uniforms and all these kind of things. And then I w we found these kind of uniforms and we found um, great actors and actresses to play these other parts uh, and to give the whole thing a, a kind of global feel because Dr. Greif's plan is, you know, to take over the world. So he needed uh, people from all over the planet. And I was very happy with uh, the people that came together for this. Um what made you want, want this project to be your first English-speaking uh, production? What made you take the leap? Yeah, I was wondering why they brought in a guy from Austria, but um, maybe because I did the submarine thing first, or two horror movies were away. Andreas, if you don't know, Andreas directed the incredible uh, Das Boot series that was on earlier this year, or was it late last year? Uh, was it, it was, it was th this year. Yeah, it was this year, absolutely fantastic. Thank you. No, but uh, when... I had no idea who Alex Ryder was until I got the script and I thought this is a really cool thing and I wanted to do something that appeals to myself and to my kids 
one of my sons is here in the audience. He's 16 and he really loved it. It passed the sun test. Today. Yes. The most, the most stringent. Yes. Test. I mean, every, every, every time I, f I finished an episode, I gathered my family in front of the computer and said, watch this. Do you like it? And they loved it. So I was happy. And, and I, th I thought then th this coming of age uh, thing combined with the spy world is really unique. So yes, I read the script and I, I was happy that they, you know, brought me in. And just watching from the clips, I've, I've been lucky enough to see the first episode, which is amazing, and just seeing the clips here, it's got a very cinematic feel. It doesn't feel like a TV show. How, uh, how, is that, is that what, what's the magic dust that you've managed to sprinkle on it? I, I mean, you, 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 you start with images in your head, and you try to find you know, the best people to support your vision, and, and I found them. You need, you need a great production designer, you need a great DP, you need a great casting director who brings you together with all those people. And then hopefully, you know, your, your plans work out. And, and I mean, in the beginning, I know what I didn't want. Uh, and it's, that was a kind of a good start. Um, and uh, Guy, what can you tell us uh, about Kyra? I believe is, 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 Jeez, Kyra, yeah. is Kyra in the audience? Stand up and say hello. Uh, this is, uh, Marley, who plays Kyra, is here there. Uh, now, she's a new character, right? She is a new character. Tell us a little bit about, about Kyra, then. Um, it felt very important to me going into the, the series that we have a female character of Alex's age who balances him in some way. Because in the books, there are, there are some girlfriends along the way, but nobody who is, if you like, a kind of match for him. And we see Kyra as a character who could return in further seasons. And she has her own skill set, which is a much geekier more computer-driven skill set than Alex's is. I kind of had in my head a, a teenage version of Lisbeth Salander from The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, if that makes sense. Good reference, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's just someone who's on the cool end of geeky. Without the stapling the feet into the I'm on, floor. I'm on the geeky spectrum, but I'm not enough on the cool end of it, so I like to write people who are, who are both, if that makes sense. Um, and, and, and we made a mistake, actually. We were going to play a clip earlier on that got cut off earlier. That was, that was our mistake. So we're just going to play another clip, if that's all right. If we could just clue, cue the rest of that clip, that would be absolutely fantastic. Thanks. <laughs> Ronky, what can you tell us about Jack's kind of, uh, uh, I guess, stabilizing force throughout all of the episodes then? Is she, get, is she going to get swept up into a hellhole of espionage? No, those are secrets. I can't tell you any of that. But she she loves Alex and will do anything for him. She doesn't stay at home for the whole series, though. <laughs> we can say that, right? <laughs> there are Mrs. Jones and Jack moments later on, so... Um. It looks, just to give you a shout, if you've got any questions, if you'd like to come up and, uh, and, uh, and start queuing up here, that would be absolutely fantastic, just so we can get a sense of how many of you there are. Um, <clears throat> uh, to, just wanted to kind of get a sense of where we are with in, in terms of getting it ready. It's all good to go. And are you, Guy, are you thinking of ahead to, to further uh, oh, gosh, episodes? Yeah. Further scenes? In, my, in my head, season three is mapped out. Season I, three? Yeah, because I need to know that in order to think about season two. Because you need to know where you're finishing season two in order to kick that off. So I'm ridiculously ahead of the curve here and, you know, quite happy, enjoying it. There you go. Season three is already mapped out. And so you've got to just sit, so sit back and just let them crack on. Guy and I were discussing the next storyline even as we drove here to Comic-Con on the way here. <laughs> Literally, we were talking about, you know, what we're going to do with these characters. Having got so many fantastic actors, how we're going to give them interesting things to do in the next season and the one after. That's absolutely right. Two and three, which I think are going to be fairly closely tied together, um, are already underway in Guy's head, which is great. Uh, I can see a very healthy cue uh, there. <laughs> uh, gentlemen, you are ready, I presume? Action. Okay, um, well, first of all, um, Anthony, thank you for Alex Ryder. Um, I read the books to this day. Uh, they're fantastic. Um, Julius Grief, probably one of the best villains you've ever written. Um, the landscape technologically uh, has changed quite substantially from 20 years ago. Uh, and with gadgetry being such an important part of being a super spy, um, how, did, how did you, um, Guy in particular, how did you... Um, adapt that kind of uh, gadgetry and technology to today's world? We thought a lot about this because the gadgets do play a big part in the books. Um, 
And there's always a moment in the book where Alex is handed a pallet of gadgets that play a big role in the story. My feeling, uh, and you can nail me to the wall on this if you have to, is that the best gadget that Alex has been given along the way comes from his uncle. And it's the skill set that's in his head, not whatever tools he's been given to carry in his pockets. And I was very keen that what we see him doing at the start of the show, which is breaking back into the school using a paperclip to get into a desk, um, that is all built in. So we see him later faced with much more scary situations where he uses those skills to get out. And it, there's less of a reliance on the technological gadgets. He does get given something. It doesn't work. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you very much. Uh, over, over to you over, over there, that side. Hi. Um, my question's for Otto. Uh, what have you enjoyed the most about bringing the character of Alex to life? Oh, that's such a hard question. I've had a blast with so many different things. I've loved doing the... I, we talked about the stunts and stuff. I really enjoyed doing the stunts. Um, I think, I think what's, what's been so fun is that every single episode in this series is so different. Um, and we go to so many different locations. And it was great to inhabit those different worlds. And I think you're going to see a few different Alexes in those different worlds, which is... Which, which was just a, a joy to kind of find along the way. You know, it, it's like a, it's an origin story, but really what you're watching is, is me as Otto finding the character each episode at a time. So that was, to be honest, just playing it and, and learning and, and finding it was, was the best. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. No worries. Thank you. Over to you, sir, in the red jacket. Uh, hi. Yeah, I was traumatized by Horowitz Horror, and um, I was just wondering, with this trailer... Stormbreaker seems to have been cut completely. Is that coming back in a later season, or was the movie so bland that it traumatized that book forever? Um, well... <laughs> Why don't you get... Don't sit on the fence, mate, whatever you do. <laughs> Look, um... <laughs> The film was what the film was, but the fact is it was made and we moved on from it. So we start with um, Point Blank as being the first in this TV series. And we, you will see in the series that some elements, the origin elements of Ian Ryder's death and how Alex becomes a spy, have been built into this. But, you know, that was then. That was a nine-year-old film. and It was made for a slightly different, probably a more American audience. I'm thrilled with what we've done this time round. This is a show, actually, that I wish the film had been. I think it's safe to say it looks the opposite of bland. I think we can all agree on that. Thank you very much for your question, though. God bless you, son. Uh, over to you. Uh, yeah, my question is for Guy. Obviously, we just uh, pointed out that we're starting off with Point Blank this time. Was it uh, difficult integrating that origin story into a completely different book that was supposed to have had everything set up already? And how about you? how you went about that? It, it sounds like it ought to be quite tricky, and in fact, I didn't find that it was. We just took Ian's backstory and what happens to Ian. Ian is Alex's uncle, for those of you who don't know. And we moved that up into the beginning of this, so it becomes the first episode, really, is Alex suffering this loss and then realising that the story he's been told about it is a lie. And the more he digs into that and the more indignant he becomes about the fact that he's been told nonsense about his un uncle, who he loves, the more he uncovers the world of the department and Alan Blunt and Mrs Jones. So it's a really useful origin story and it's important to tell it, but... As we were explaining to the chap over there, we wanted to start fresh with a different book, different place, and, and just take it from there. So it, it, it informs emotionally the whole series, actually, because... Sorry, go on. I was to say, thank you. I really can't wait to see it. Oh, good. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, yes, sir. Hello. Hello. Um, <laughs> uh, by the way, the series looks amazing. Really looking forward to watching it. Kind of a question for Anthony. Um, having grown up reading loads and loads of your books, this has a slightly darker feel. Some of your other books, Power of Fire, for example, had a slightly darker tone or seemed to. Could we ever hope to maybe see those come to the screen? Um, I'd love to see the Power of Five on the screen. You know, I'm waiting. Any producers in the hall, come and talk to me afterwards. I mean, yeah, I think that it's interesting, but the show 
has the books I think have got darker and darker as they've gone on and I, what I like about this show is although it is quite dark it hasn't lost sight of the fact that it's still meant to be entertaining and has its cheerful moments but in answer to your question um, yeah sure I'd love to see The Point of the Power of Five and for that matter some of my other books on the screen I, I live in, in hope all of them, right, Anthony? Every well, single well, one. whatever, you know. And can I say how much more I liked your question than the first one? Thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. Cheers. <laughs> thank you, mate. Uh, the subtly dressed uh, person there, how you doing? Hi, thank you. My, my question's for you, Anthony. You said there were going to be two more seasons. Does that mean that all the books are going to be adapted into the show? And can I have a photo of you and the rest of the cast after this panel's over? <laughs> uh, as for the photo... I don't know. I don't organise those things, but don't in, ask me. He cries. In terms of a series, all day, in, terms, in terms of the future life of this series, of course. Look, there are fourteen Alex Ryder books. That could be fourteen more years of Alex on TV. At the end of the day, that decision is really down to, to you, to the to the audience. If you like the show, if it does well, we'll be back. But it's encouraging that you know the people who've seen it so far have been really positive, and the guy and I are already commissioned to be writing and working on the next season. So that's a good sign. That's great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Hey, Joker. How are you doing? Hi. Um, uh, uh, you know, number 10. Who, who, who's the question for? Anyone in particular? No. Okay. Fine. Um, well, it might not come, but uh, number 10, it's Yazin. So um, how's that going to work? Because he, when does, does he get introduced before that or... It's a good really point. good question. It's a good question. It's a good point. Yeah. He's and I think Yasin's here characters. somewhere. Isn't Yasin in the audience too? Do we have an, a crazy Russian assassin somewhere in the building? Somewhere. Maybe Stand keeping, up keeping his... They've keep, gone after that other lad. Keeping a low profile, as Yasin would. You'll see, guys worked it out really cleverly that Yasin, although he originally appears in Stormbreaker, he comes now into Point Blank and repeats his role there and is going to become, I think, a really interesting and dark and serious character in the series moving forward. He's one of my favourite characters, so he's definitely in. Definitely there. If yeah. you look around, they might be watching you right now. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Hi there. Hi. Um, so my question is for Anthony. I really admire Alex Ryder's resilience like throughout the book. And I think he like goes through a lot. And I think like if you compare it to a normal person, he's been a lot of like near death experiences and situations where I could probably like give up straight away. What part of his character keeps him going? Like is there any particular thing that just like, you know what, you have to like Keep you're, going. you're going to forgive me. I'm going, to, I'm going to pass that question on to somebody who knows even more about Alex Ryder now than I do. Otto, can you answer that? <laughs> um, what gives Alex his, his resilience? I don't know what gives him his resilience. He just, I think what's amazing about him is that he's, he's just this normal kid. He's, he's an everyday kid who's not, I mean, in our show, he's not the most popular kid in school. He's just normal and and then he's thrown into these amazing situations and he has to just improvise and work it out. And, and I think what's amazing is watching someone so normal have to overcome those hardships and, you know, having grown up without any parents and, and his relationship with his uncle, which in our series is, is much more tense than it is, um, I think, in the books. So he, he, he's just got it within him that every time that he's under pressure or he, he's, it looks like his back's against the wall, he somehow manages to just get away. And I think that's why it's interesting to watch because you're not watching someone who finds it easy. You're watching someone who, who doesn't find it easy, but does it because he, he has to. Because he's got, that's the only, if that's the only thing that he's got, he's got to do it, you know. There you go. I hope that answers your question. <laughs> Channel that. That's a good one. Uh, hello. Why hello. Hi there. How are you doing? You thought the other guy was subtly dressed. This is uh, <laughs> something else. Uh, I'm triggered. Hi. My original question already got answered, so instead I'm going to say um, my favourite um, in the series is probably Eagle Strike. Um, to everyone on the panel, what's your favourite Alex Ryder book? Ooh. I didn't read them. I've been really honest. Um, <laughs> but my, the re you know, one of the biggest reasons I did it is because it's, you know, an audience, a completely different audience, and I... I haven't, but my nephew is a very good judge of character and he says they're all great. Um, if we're going in order, my, my eldest son 
like to point blank best. I've got a soft spot for Eagle Strike, partly because I'm thinking about it so much at the moment, because that would be our next series. Whoa. I just know point blank, and I really like it. <laughs> Good answer. Um, I'm going to say point blank. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I already said, but point blank. I would, I would say Eagle Strike's second, a very close second. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I like all of them. <laughs> <laughs> which, which, was the, uh, which was the easiest to write? Are, they, are any of them easy to write? I never use easy and difficult as talking about writing, because I think that if it's difficult, something's gone wrong. It, writing should flow. Writing should be energy and passion. And the moment you start feeling you're knotted and tied up and it's not coming, I stop. So, uh, in answer to your question, Sydney, I love Russian roulette. It's one of my very favourites. I'm so fascinated by Yasna, by the by the evil guy. Um, uh, but 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 no, easy, difficult. I don't do. Fine. Uh, we've got time for probably a couple more. We'll go. We'll go over to there. Hi. Hey. Um, I like a lot of the people in here, you know, grew up with the books. And I remember being really young when I started reading them and being like, wow, Alex Ryder, 14, so mature. And then now being 19 and looking back, I'm like, you're a child, go do your homework. So like <laughs> seeing this much more mature version of Alex, I'm really excited to see. So Otto, what's your, what are you most excited about, about maturing this character up for a slightly different audience? Um, I think... Uh, oh God! One of my most excited. I, th I think he's cool because you're going to watch from the beginning of the series to the end. It's you're watching a boy become a man, and you're watching him in that situation, but also have to become a spy as well. So it, it, he's got, and he's also dealing with girls and friends and school and the normal things that teenagers deal with. So. It, it, It's, it's not an easy journey for anyone, but he muddles through, and I think it's, yeah, it's going to be cool to watch. I, I don't know if that answers your question, but I, I guess being a 14-year-old from when the books were first written compared to a 14-year-old yeah. now has changed quite a lot. Don't, don't forget, the first book was written 20 years ago. Yeah. And Alex in that time has aged only 15 months. I mean, you know, it's, taken a, it's been a slow aging process. I've meanwhile aged 15 years. And that's, I mean, has it, 20 years hasn't been fair. Um, I think it's an interesting question. And what's great about Otto's performances is that he's obviously not 14 in that, in that clip in the film. But the age is never mentioned. He is just sort of, it's a yeah. spirit rather than the year. That's what counts. Lovely. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Hey, Doctor. How are you doing? Hi. Hi. Uh, I really love the Alex Ryder books, so I wanted to say that. Thank But you. My question is about the show being more grounded in reality. Eventually, Alex Ryder does get into some pretty surreal situations, like he ends up in space. Could we expect to eventually see that on TV? Good um, question. Budgetary question. Budget, budget. Can we afford that? Um, yeah, you need to ask the producers, can we afford it? Yeah, I didn't listen. Archangel, book number six, sends Alex into space. I did a lot of research for it. Funnily enough, you would do much better in outer space than your dad would because young people have more flexible bones and muscles and will survive better out there, apparently. Um, so, yeah, we'll, I think that if we get that far, and if Guy doesn't cut it, he'll, t he'll go to space. Yeah. Is that what you want to see? Yeah. Good. Awesome. Good. <laughs> Sony, are you listening? <laughs> I'd uh, do that. I think we've got time for one more question. Hello there, uh, Spider-Man, how are you doing? Um, what's the age rating for Alex Ryder and when will, when will it shoot on big screen? Wow, there it is. <laughs> uh, what is the age rating? We are effectively... Sorry? For the yeah. audience, I think yeah. you can watch it. It's you for everybody. Watch it. That's the whole point. It's You're allowed. It's for young people, for your parents. It's got something for everybody. That's the whole thing. As to it, the big screen, I'm very happy being on this screen, on the TV screen. All the most exciting drama, in my view, is happening right now on, 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 you know, on the S-boxes, on TV. That's where all the action is. And you know, this is exactly the, the film, the TV series that I really wanted to see out of my books. So, um, so it's here and it's for everyone. Uh, in answer to your question, I think what you're asking was, at the moment, it's it's being it's being it's being put out. Lots of people are having a look at it, but it's pretty confident that, that within no time at all, it will be it will be appearing on telly at some point in the yeah. very near future. The response has been fantastic, and we'll know very soon. Watch, look out for us on the media, on social media, and any news we'll let you have. 
and any support you guys give it will only will only expedite that. So hashtag Alex Rider TV. Uh, that's all we've got time for, I'm afraid. So can I please get you to give uh, a big round of applause to Anthony Horowitz?